I've been really struggling to get my account ready to go for the iOS 14 change. I've watched a myriad of different videos, piecing it all together, but there's a number of pitfalls, areas that are kind of hard to navigate. What's up guys? Today's video is a full comprehensive guide to how to get your Facebook Ads Manager account set up and ready to go for the iOS 14 changes that are now upon us. This is especially pertinent if you're a musician and you use Facebook ad campaigns, both on Facebook and Instagram, to drive traffic to your Spotify or other pages. But you can also use this guide if you're selling merch, products, whatever it is. So I put together 11 steps that can fully take you from start to finish, registering your domain, getting your domain verified, getting your landing page set up, getting your pixels all ready to go, testing your ads, all of it is here in today's video. Okay, so I wanna organize all of the things that you need to do two ways. First, in columns, I'm gonna talk about the three different websites that you'll need to be using. And then second, naming out the different tasks to be iOS 14 compliant. So the different websites you're gonna be using is your Facebook Ads Manager, the Business Manager site. Second is your domain registration website or your uh, website hosting platform. Third is the landing page. So for this video, for the domain, I'm gonna be using Wix, which I actually have a website running through. If you already have websites set up, you can just use your Wix, your Squarespace, WordPress, whatever it is. But if you wanna go for a cheaper route and you haven't done this, you can just use GoDaddy or Google Domains, I believe. And all of this will be pretty similar. I'll basically just lay out all of the different keywords and things you have to be aware of on these pages. And then I'm gonna to use Toned In for my landing page, but you could also use Hyped It and it'll be really similar. For the tasks, this is a nine step approach to getting everything going. First is make sure you have a business account set up, not a personal account. Second is you wanna set up your domain and register it. Third is you're gonna to go to your landing page and make sure that it is set up to reference that new domain. Fourth is you're gonna go back to Facebook Business Manager and verify that domain there. Fifth, you're going to create a pixel if you haven't already created one. Sixth is you're going to create a test landing page on Toned In or Hyped It. Seventh is you're gonna run the test here. And then eighth, you're going to configure web events. This is actually one of the new iOS 14 things you need to have. And then ninth is you are gonna run some actual ads on your account and you're gonna warm up your account so it doesn't get banned. And I'll get to that at the end. So let's jump into step number one, which is set up your new business account. The important thing here is you're gonna be using a business account, not a personal account. This is actually something that hung me up for a while. I was actually using a personal account and not allowing myself to run through these other steps. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go over and click on your user picture and your profile image, and then you'll see a drop-down menu where you have your personal account, but also any Instagram accounts that you've set up as business accounts will populate here. So you wanna be using an Instagram account that's already set up as a business, and then you can click on yours here. Um, I've already set up So Lush, so I'll click on Beige, my other business account. And even though it's set up as a business account on Instagram, it's not set up as a business here yet in Ads Manager. So you wanna run through the steps here, which aren't too difficult, in order to set it up as a business account. So you'll click here, you'll change the name of your business account, you'll click Next, and then you will go through the steps here, fill out your billing information, and then you will have your business account set up and you'll be ready to go through all of the other steps. Okay, so step two is going and creating your domain. I'm using Wix and what you'll wanna do in Wix is click on your username or your email and then go to domains here. Once you're on the domains page of whatever service you're using, you're going to see the name of your domain and then here in Wix, you'll have three dots and you'll want to manage DNS records. So whatever you're using, you wanna to go to the DNS records page. And here on the DNS records page, you'll see your host name. This is something important to remember. Your host name is just the main page that everything is referenced to. So there's no www. there's no go. nothing like that. It's just solushmusic.com. Um, and then under your host name, is where you have all those other ones. So the aliases or the C name. 
So I've already set up go.solushmusic.com. That's what I'm using currently. Um, you'll also have your you know, main www.1, but you can add any records here and use any different aliases. And this is where Toned In will reference it. So what we're gonna do is click add record and you can use whatever word or letters you want. Um, why don't we use hello.solushmusic.com. And then for the value, uh, the important thing is for Toned In, we're gonna want to use fanlink.to. So this is how Toned In and your domain registration will communicate is by inserting this value right here. Then for the TTL column, uh, this is basically how often everything refreshes. And by default, it's usually set to an hour. And the main thing here is you just want everything to be the same. Um, so we'll just set it as an hour, click save, click save changes. And we have that set up here as one of our aliases. Now for step number three, we're gonna head over to Toned In. We'll click on the top right where our username is, and then we'll click on settings. Now under settings, we'll go down to advertising on the left side, and you'll see custom domains down here, and we will click add domain. Then we will insert that name that we have, which is hello.solushmusic.com. Click next. And here it's kind of useful. You have for GoDaddy, Squarespace, Namecheap, Wix, any domain registration hosts, um, you have instructions here. So if you're using these other ones, check those out to kind of uh, get a better idea of how specifically it works with those services. Then you click next. And then for the next step, you can add a pixel here. I'm not gonna do it yet. This is optional and we'll get to pixels in a bit. Then you click done. And you'll see it's already configured as the status. Now this is because we've already done the domain registration on Wix, as you can see here. So if you hadn't done that yet, uh, if you did this in a different order, then I think it'll show pending or something here but just make sure that you finish the step on Wix or whatever site you're using, and then you have it as a check mark and configured. Then we're ready to move on to step number four, which is to head back over to Business Manager. Click onto Business Settings here. Then you will go down to Brand Safety, click on Domains, and you'll see I'm already verified here. You won't have that yet. You'll have a button in the middle of the page to add a domain. So I'm just gonna put in something kind of random here. I'll do jolo.incapslock.com. Will that work? Okay. The important thing here is you're adding the host name. You're not gonna add the hello.solutionmusic.com or any www. You'll just say solushmusic.com, so just use the host name. And um, it should show up like this once you've added that in. And what you're gonna wanna do is go to DNS verification, the third button, the third option, and you wanna copy the TXT to your clipboard. And make sure you follow these four steps that are here on Facebook. Um, so once you head back over to Wix or whatever service you're using, you know, you have your host, you have your CNAME, and then you also have TXT. And this is where you want to add a record. Under the value, you're going to paste in that text that Facebook gave us. We want to make sure our TTL is consistent at one hour. And um, for the host name, you might want to have the at symbol, but you'll see here for Wix, it tells you not to. So just make sure you get the host name right. For us on Wix, we're just gonna leave that blank, click save. So then once we click save, then we just have to play the waiting game. This can take up to 72 hours, it says. For me, I think it was about 10 minutes that it worked, but just um, you can kind of test it out as early as you want by just clicking verify. And eventually it should work and then you should get a pop-up saying that the domain is verified. And that's what I have here for So Lush Music. So it should show up like this after a while. Um, if after 72 hours it's still not working, then you're gonna wanna 
go back and make sure you've done everything right in the previous steps. Okay, so now for step number five, we're going to create a pixel. You may already have a pixel linked onto your account, so you don't have to worry about this too much, but you're gonna go to, uh, you're gonna go to data sources and then pixels. And the thing is, is I already had a pixel that was created just for this business account. And I think it's cause I had that domain registration for Wix. So I had like a pixel created that was like Wix dot something, something, something. I just edited the name to so lush, but you can add a pixel here, follow the setup process, but you should already have one if you've done the previous steps that you can just edit the name to whatever you want. And you'll see on here, you have an ID number for your pixel. You'll want to copy that for the next step. And that next step is creating a test landing page on our landing page service. So we'll go back to toned in, we'll click campaigns, and then we'll click create a new link campaign. I'm sure many of you have already done this process before, but I'll do it quickly. We'll go to a music campaign for an existing release. And we're going to, we're going to, um, actually I have to copy my song link. I'll, do this for my latest released whole again. So I'll copy the song link, paste it into here, and uh, then click create link. You wanna make everything not visible here. Just have your Spotify visible. It's better in general to have fewer options for people. Um, I'm gonna do whole again. This is, this is just what shows up on the landing page. Um, so I'll leave that as is. Uh, don't have to fill out any of this, click continue. Now for here, in general, don't have a, uh, in general, delete this text, don't have a preview, because then people will just play your song on the landing page and they won't go through to your Spotify. Click continue. Um, this doesn't, for the metadata, we'll just go through here. Now for the link path, this is where some of that new stuff is incorporated. For the domain, we're just gonna use this hello.soleshmusic.com. So make sure you have your new domain here in this section. Then for the link path, um, you'll, if you go down here to the bottom, you'll see the domain and then slash the link path. So for this one, we'll do whole, let me do whole again, test three. You can see I've obviously had a few takes, we'll continue. Now we wanna make sure for the next step we enter our pixel information. So copy that pixel code down and paste it in here. And then copy the pixel name and paste it here. For me, it's auto-populated this information, so it'll start auto-populating here. And then click continue. Uh, campaign name, this is just on the back end and toned in, so I'll say test three and create link. We'll, we wanna view the landing page and you'll see up at the top, it says hello.soleshmusic.com. So it is working, we're using our new domain. Uh, let's go back and we will copy this link. Now I'm using Safari right now, but for the next step, you should be using Chrome, maybe Firefox, but uh, it doesn't work in Safari. And so step number seven is to test the landing page and test the pixel essentially, make sure it's working. So up here at the top, we'll go to business tools, all the dots, and we'll click events manager. And this is all of the information about your pixel and the different events that you have. You'll see on the left pane, you have all your pixels that you have for this account. You'll click on the one that you're gonna use here that you have linked up to your toned in. And there's a lot of different options that show up on the right. Um, my information is a little bit more populated than yours will be at first, but you'll we'll want to start by doing the test. So we'll click test events. And now the cool thing here is we can paste in our landing page here. We can test any triggers that happen on that landing page and see, make sure that they're all working. You can do this with any landing page or website that you use. It's really handy. Um, you can test any different event, like you could test adding to cart, purchasing, uh, go through any of those process, make sure they're all communicating well. So what we're gonna do is click open website now. So now this should register as a view page and we go back to events manager and yeah, page view processed. So we know that's working now. Uh, we'll go back to that landing page and click on the Spotify play. 
So now we go back and that registered as a view content. That's what we want to have happen. That's the important thing for our music ads is to make sure the view content trigger event. So now what we're gonna do is move on to step number eight. And what this is, um, is you'll see over here on the overview page of the uh, events manager is you'll see these events down at the bottom and these won't show up at first. You may have to wait about 10 minutes, but everything from the test events, those two different tests that you ran or whatever you ran, eventually in about 10 minutes up on upwards, maybe an hour, those will populate here. And I've done this test a few times so you can see I have five and four. But um, once these have sh shown up on your pixel slash conversion API tab, then you'll head over to the aggreg aggregated event measurement. And this is the new section that Facebook has implemented so that they're compliant with iOS 14. So this is where we configure the web events, make sure that our view content trigger is set up and ready to go for iOS 14. So configure web events. And then you'll see here you have your registered domain. Uh, you'll have whether it's verified on here and then configured events will all show here. You can have a list of eight of them. You can only use up to eight now with iOS 14. So you can't track absolutely everything someone may do on a web page, only eight things. And they're all prioritized from highest to lowest. So what we want to make sure is that we have view content. That's the main thing for these for these type of ads. But if you're running things where you want people to purchase products, then you'll want to have those set up as well. So we'll click edit. And then you can click add event over here. And um, you can choose, then make sure to choose your pixel and then whatever you want to do. So you could do add to cart, add payment info, any of these, just up to eight events. Um, I've already added the view content, so I don't have to do this, but you'll put in view content here and then you'll click submit. And then you should have that event configured here and you can run ads and have people trigger that view content event in iOS 14. And after we've done that, we're pretty much all set and ready to go. The main thing to do now is to warm up your account. I referenced this at the beginning of the video, but Facebook is very trigger happy at removing accounts and flagging accounts. And I'm sure some of you have had this happen before where your account has been deactivated. I've had this personally happen. And um, it's just because their algorithm is, you know, it's just a very automated system and it's very easy for them to just flag accounts because they think it could be something nefarious. Often what happens is if you start running conversion campaigns immediately and a lot of them, then that flags the algorithm and they will deactivate your account and maybe permanently remove your account. So be careful here and make sure to run just some traffic campaigns, some engagement campaigns at first for at least a couple days. Make sure that these are going fine and then you can start incorporating some of your conversion campaigns once your account is a little bit more warmed up and ready to go. I hope you enjoyed and got some value out of all these different steps that you have to take care of to set up for iOS 14. I'll be making some more videos in the future about running ads but also just music production and general music industry stuff so feel free to hit the subscribe if you want to watch any of these or don't whatever you want to do and I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. I just hate Facebook ads manager, business manager. The UI has to be honestly the worst UI of any software, whether it's DAWs or anything online.